real quick. I spelt it wrong to you. Can you see that right there where it says grow G R O X T one day of the Lord G R O X T one. That's the name of the guy that I watch a lot where you see signs on the earth and it's called Day of the Lord and the reason why I say to watch that is because this guy's very um, into the signs of the earth and what's happening and I believe that we're at that time today he made this clip I'm telling you to watch two years ago in March and this is where we're at today, what's about to happen. Um, that's why I'm highly suggesting that you go find his channel. That's Grow, G-R-O-X-T, 1. Okay, there's no dashes or nothing in between it. It's capital G-R-O-X-T, 1. And then it's called Day of the Lord. He's got a lot of them. He's been doing this for about two, three years now. That's about how long I've been seeing things as well. Um, he's one where anything he's got posted new out, man, I'm watching it. I want to be notified right away. Because there's a lot of wolves out there, people that want the attention and stuff like that. Um, I wanted people to hear what I had to say several years ago, but nobody, I was totally rejecting me. But it's not about me, it's about my message, what I've been trying to tell people. And the only thing I'm telling you now is to listen to what he's saying and then also my visions that I've posted about what's getting ready to happen. These are true signs. Um, and people that are asking for money, you know, saying, well, you know, we ain't asked for donation, but hey, thanks, we could really use it. Listen, I'm sleeping in the front seat of my truck. I'm getting by, okay? I got food here. I got ways of figuring out and getting by. And then, I'm not trying to fix problems around the world because this is coming upon the whole world right now, okay? Once America's destroyed, and it's going to be. Um, it's coming upon the whole world, man. Nobody's going to be spared what's coming. So when people are asking you for money and donations and stuff like that, um, I highly recommend look around. You might be able to help somebody around you. You know, there's people always needing some help. But be careful who you're helping because, like I said, there's demons in people today. You see them back smoking cigarettes and stuff like that and they're wanting you to give them money to you. You know what? Uh -uh. If they really need some help, they're going to want something to eat or something. Not, I ain't going to supply people their cigarettes. I had a guy one time, like I said, I'm living in my truck. I gave him some of those cup of soups and stuff. And, uh, and then I gave him probably, I'm going to say, $12 worth of stuff. I've got a lot of food stored that don't require refrigeration, you know, where I could probably live for probably two months. But I gave a lot of that stuff out to certain people. And then come to find out I'm in the store getting myself a, uh, a root beer, a soda drink. And then uh, I'm sharing with the clerk in there, everything. I, everybody I talk to, I share. And then that guy that I tried helping out, I guess he bummed some money and he's coming in there to buy a beer. I looked right at him and I said, man, I said, hey, these are the end times, man. And I just got to sharing with you and I gave you a bunch of food. And here you are, you get a little money in your pocket and you're buying beer. And I'm struggling to keep gas in my truck, you know, and I got to live in my truck. You got to be careful, you know. You can find people that might need a little help out there. It could be your neighbor, I don't know, you know. But you just got to look around you. And you're not going to save the world. Jesus Christ is going to do that. He's going to save those that believe in him. You can't save this world, man. You can only spread his word. And, uh, you know, if you see your neighbor, like I had this old lady that lived across the street from me when I was married. She was living on Social Security. And I, and I seen her. I watched her for a while. I got to know her when I caught some guy stealing a newspaper. And uh, I questioned the guy about it. I said, hey, you just picked up her paper. My wife's going, shh, don't say nothing. And I said, well, he stole her paper, you know. That's our neighbor. We're supposed to watch out for our neighbors. And uh, the guy took off. i never seen him again for months. But anyhow, I got her a new newspaper, and I put it out there in her um, driveway, but I put it right there by her door. And uh, then I no, 
noticed how nobody was ever coming around her, you know, nobody helping her in any kind of way. And uh, I went over there, I put a note on her door saying, you know, if she needed some help, I'd fix up the outside of her house, which I did. And uh, But she didn't see the note. I had to go over there and knock on the door after a few days. And, uh, and I said, hey, I said, I put this right here and I walked it over there to her and I said, it was a contract saying that I would paint the exterior of her house, fix all the stucco and stuff. And, uh, and she looked at me and she goes, what's it really going to cost? Yeah. <laughs> and I just told her, I said, look, I said, right down here it says free, nothing. You know, and I had extra paint, everything, come from other jobs. I mean, I had all this stuff on hand, even extra paint, because I didn't throw nothing away. You know, it did cost me a little money because of the color she picked. I told her I was going to use the color I had, but she didn't like it. And uh, so I had to get the color tinted to what she wanted, and I had to buy some more paint to match that. Yeah, it didn't cost me that much more, you know. But it took me probably, I'm going to say, three, four days to do the outside of her house. And, you know, but I'm just saying, you can help your neighbors. Now, you don't have to go to the extremes like I did, like that, because that was a lot of work. I was doing it to basically keep me busy because I did that for a living and things were real slow then and uh, you know and she needed help you know but that's why I'm saying you can look around your neighbors man sometimes your neighbors can need help you know even if it's to talk to the kids you see them straying off around wrong kids try to get them into the right thinking and stuff man because today in this world it's not just against these homosexuals man because these homosexuals, they're the frosting on the cake. That's what you get from all this perverted living, man. There's a lot of adultery, a lot of stinking thinking. That's what I call it, stinking thinking. Uh, I just posted a clip about that, stinking thinking. But anyhow, I want you to look at that. This guy right here is called G-R-O-X-T-1. And then it's called The Day of the Lord. It was out in March uh, 13th he posted it, in 2013. And I'm, I'm watching it right now. I haven't even finished watching it. That's how important it is that you get this. I want you to be studying what he's doing. But seek the Lord with all your heart. And stay away from these people that are asking you for any kind of money. Because this time is short here. I'm living in my truck, man. And if these people can't survive like I'm doing it, you know, I ain't asking nobody for nothing. But if I can get a little bit of work, that would be great. I could use some work. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, man. And uh, I'm looking if I can get a little bit of day's work, two days work. I'm a painter. I do stucco repair, drywall repair. I ain't looking for no donations, no handouts. Um, like I said, I've got food. I've got a little bit of money for gas. I'm not hurting for nothing. Our time's going to be short here. And ain't no amount of money going to help me anyhow. You know, I'm not looking to get back into a house. Um, it would be nice, you know, where I could take a shower every now and then. You know, trying to get keep clean is difficult. But I know these are the end times, man. And uh, we got to be strong, man. And don't let people use you in these end times and play your guilt. Just look around you. If you can help somebody, help somebody. But don't help people endure in their habits, bad habits, stinking, thinking kind of stuff. If they're smoking, drinking, let them go get their help the best way they can through the Salvation Army, whatever they're doing. But if they can still find time to do that kind of stuff, man, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, nothing, man. Um, you can't help that, you know what I mean? You can't. only thing you can do is enable that. Um, but there are people out there, like older neighbors, you know, that you can help, that do need help, you know. And a lot of people ain't doing what they should do. And the uh, Salvation Army, they got that one eye symbol showing. Don't be giving them no money. I went by there the other day to see about buying a sweatshirt because I was going to head up into the mountains and hang out there for a while. But I decided, no, I'm going to try to hang out here because it's close enough for me to go up there. Because if looting and riot starts happening, you want to have water on hand. You don't have to have years of it. You just need a, a couple of months. Because if looting and rioting happens, it's going to get ugly and bad for a little while. But the Lord's going to take those that are with Him. Okay? We're not going to be stuck here. 
but we may see some stuff. Just be prepared, okay? You got to have some stuff. I got in my truck probably four, four cases of water, and I've got uh, food that don't require refrigeration, those tuna fish packets. They're a dollar a piece at Walmart, man. They got different flavors. You can make a sandwich out of them. Uh, crackers, those will store for a couple of months. Um, you, you know, you don't, you just got to get by, survive, you know what I mean? Um, be prepared. But uh, when this looting and stuff happens, you don't want to be joining them, stealing stuff, thinking, well, if they're doing it, I'll do it too. No, uh-uh. That's the last thing you want to do is be a part of that. Um, that's the reason why I'm sleeping in my truck, because I wouldn't cheat neither. I wouldn't do what everybody else was doing, you know, and people were trying to get me to do that. Um, remember, narrow is the way to the kingdom of heaven, man, and wide are the gates that lead into hell, you know, and that's what you hear a lot of people saying, hey, well, they're doing it, might as well do it, do what everybody else is doing. Those are the warning flags, man. When you hear people telling you that stuff, and let me tell you, when you start having those bad dreams every night, that's the devil and the demons coming after you. And that's because you're doing something right. He's not going after those that are uh, that he's already got. He's only going after the ones that are uh, out trying to warn people and trying to um, get you to, on the right path, you know. And uh, those that are left behind, it's not over for them. They can still make it. Just don't take the mark of the beast. Don't den deny the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And if you die in Christ, you'll go with Christ. You know, but uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to be left behind because they're not listening. God bless and seek the Lord Jesus Christ because, you know, he's, he's still coming. And we're close. The hour's close.